Um, I am Jagbir Kang, and I am the product manager for uh, switching platforms. Uh, primarily responsible for Catalyst 3850 and Catalyst 3650 for our newest iOS XE Denali 16.1.1 release. Um, today, I'd like to explain you what's so special about uh, iOS XE Denali 16.1.1. Um, I think for the rest of the presentation, I may just call it 16x or 16.1.1, just because it's too long. Um, and then I'll explain you some of the things uh, that we have brought in. Uh, in 16.1.1 release, which FCS uh, November <coughs> of last year. So before I go into the presentation, uh, let's talk about uh, some of the problems that customers face uh, prior to 16.1.1. So in a regular, in, a, in any customer deployment, uh, we have a combination of routers and switches, right? So I'm just going to give an example for ASR1K and Catalyst 3850 here. So let's say we have ASR1K, and then we have our Catalyst 3850. And if we look at the current release trains for <coughs> ASR1K, first and foremost, uh, there are two versioning systems, right? So that itself is very confusing for uh, many of our customers. So looking at the ASR1K, um, we can say, let's take an example of one of the release trains, which is 3.7.16 followed by 15.3.2, right? And then um, Catalyst 38.50 on the other end is on a di different release train, right? Which is, three seven, so let's say 3.7.3 with 15.2.3, right? So customers have complained about first, which is a life cycle management, right? So, in this scenario where customers have hundreds of devices, it's a mix of um, ASR 1K and a mix of Catalyst 3850. Uh, when a device goes end of line, end of sale, uh, ASR 1K versus Catalyst 3850, a customer has to manually keep track of that. And if you have one uh, device here and there, that's okay. But in a customer deployment with hundreds of devices, they potentially could be running different version, all of them, right? So that is cumbersome, okay? Then the second problem that customers have complained about is feature consistency, right? Okay, so even if, uh, what that means is even if I change this to 3, 2 here, if a given feature is up and running on ASR 1K in 15.3.2 version, that same feature may not be available in this same version running on the switches, right? So customers are confused. Hey, you know, I have an ASR 1K and I'm running this feature. You give me the same uh, version here on our Catalyst switches and I'm not able to run that feature, right? So then they end up contacting PAC and escalations and whatnot, right? And the third problem is just the config, right? So let's assume that one given feature exists on both the platforms today, right? And the mere fact that there are two different releases, we have different engineering resources, there may have, different people may have worked on that, and uh, there is no consistency in terms of the CLI or in terms of the show command, right? So looking at all these three problems, uh, we have, Cisco has invested three plus years of development effort, testing efforts, to come up with a single unified release, which is iOS XE Denali 16.1.1. So in the next couple of slides, I'm gonna talk about the migration strategy in terms of the platforms, and then I'll go into the details of what else is in there, what's so special about it, right? So just a couple of slides, I'll talk about the migration. And before I proceed, do you have any questions? Just this part. Okay. All right. So looking at our migration strategy, uh, we started off with our top of the line switches, Catalyst 3850 and Catalyst 3650. Prior to 16.1.1, uh, these were getting released in release train 37X, right? So this would be, this is the last supported release for those two, 
platforms, right? So going forward, uh, after November of 2015, any new features that we're going to introduce on Catalyst 3850, 3650 will be on this new 16X release, right? Um, the other thing is um, the feature parity, right? Um, what we have done is we want to make sure that uh, our customers who switch from 37X to 16X, the migration should be seamless, right? So we have done feature parity. Any feature that is available on our Catalyst 3850, 3650 in 37X, the same features are available on 16X. There are some exceptions. Um, the release notes have more information on what those exceptions are, right? So seamless migration for customers going from here to over there. Okay. Right here. Over here. Yes. Does that mean that um, the ASRs and the catalysts they're going to have this? I'm reading off of Twitter. Um, somebody asked the question if there will be the same code on both platforms. Then. Yes. Yeah. So if we look at 16 to 1, which is due for release in uh, March of 2016, we are going to bring in our access and um, edge routers, ISR 4K, CSR, and ESR 1K, and they are going to migrate to 16 to 1. And again, the feature consistency, feature parity, it would be of that release. Right. What about things like security, IPsec, or DMVPN, or things like that? Uh, can you repeat the question? What about things like security, functionality, VPN, tunneling, IPsec? So anything that is available on ASR uh, 1K CSR today is going to be available there, right? Um, if, if there is... Yeah, all the security features, DMVPN, tunneling, protocols, everything. Yeah, no one can hear you unless you have a microphone. Yeah, there you go. Ooh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Put it on. Yeah, all the security features, DMVPN, GetVPN, everything will be supported. On 3850? No, no, no. Not on 3850. So, so I was going to point that out, but good that you brought it up. So uh, we are talking about consistency. That doesn't mean that whatever is available on ASR 1K is going to be available on 3850, right? There has to be a business case. What, what we are saying is, I mean, there are limitations also in terms of hardware, right? So given something was on ASR 1K, it doesn't mean that automatically it's going to show up, right? And I think as I move forward, like one more, just pause for one more slide, and after that, we'll, we'll get into that. Okay. okay. So uh, that's our migration strategy. Um, 16 to 1 will bring that, and then in the future we'll have more things. Okay, just real quickly on the release cadence, uh, nothing much has changed, so we'll have two standard maintenances followed by one extended maintenance. Uh, I think you guys are probably familiar with what that means and all the rebuilds, so I'm not going to go through that details, but it's kind of what we have today. Nothing much has changed. OK. Um, this slide is the heart of the presentation. I'm going to draw something right over here, just so I can explain. Can I, can I clarify one thing? Yes. Um, so you're talking about a unified code base that supports multiple different platforms. Yes. The same code will not run on every platform, right? Because there's different feature sets, like ASRs have QFPs, so forth. Right. OK. So. Um, it, we're talking about a single unified release, and we every platform we will eventually we're we're trying to migrate, right? Uh -huh. So we are migrating in such a way that if something is like let's take an example for Catalyst 3850, right? We have policy-based routing. It's working today on our 37 release, and when we have migrated, we have made sure that that same functionality will work in our, on our 1611. So does that kind of I'm thinking like you have like a software package that's compiled for x86. Right. You'll also have the same, same software, both. but it happens to be compiled for yes. ARM. Same file for both. That's, that's what it yes. sounds like to me. Okay. So same file for both. I mean, there is some effort uh, required in terms of development efforts to move it, but it's for you, it's no different from what you have, what customers have today on a different release. So let's uh, let me just deep dive into uh, what that means. So let's say, yeah, guess, what's, the, what's the benefit for the customer? I guess. Uh, I'll explain. Okay. okay. So let's say uh, we have CLI, and what we have done is right over here. It's a unified software right here, software stack here. 
and then you're going to have ASIC right over here, right? The hardware right here. So one of the benefits that I talked about was let's look at number three, right? The consistency in terms of the config. So customers would be able to use the same um, network um, management tools like CLI, SNMP, or they can use the same that they're using, let's say, on ASR 1K. All they, have, they don't have to modify anything. They don't have to worry about a feature having inconsistency in terms of the show or the config com commands, right? So let's talk about a feature again. I'll, I'll just pick on policy-based routing, right? If a customer is running some script on ASR 1K, they can simply take the same script and run it on Catalyst 3850, right? So nothing changes here. And we have unified the software stack. So nothing has changed here. And if a new platform comes in, and let's say policy-based routing is, does not exist on that pl platform, all we need to do is do the hardware programming right here at this layer, right? What are the benefits of this, right? One is the customer doesn't have to spend a lot of resources changing the scripts and manually changing the scripts, right? They can just take it and run it. Now keep in mind that if that feature uh, doesn't exist on 3850, I mean to say the support is not here, then that configuration just not gonna get accepted, right? Which is, which is okay, that's how it is today, right? So one benefit is number three pointed out right there. The other benefit is the uh, feature velocity. So let's say our customers today, they ask for a certain feature, right? And we get back to them and we say, you know, uh, engineering resources, we're gonna take 12 to 18 months to deliver this for a given uh, platform, right? So now, if we do it this way, we, this is what's delivered in our 16X release. See, we, we can leverage this part, we can leverage this part, this code hardening has already been done, right? So we don't have to spend a lot of resources here. All we have to do is all the development efforts, all the testing efforts, they need to be at this layer, right? So feature velocity is an added benefit. And we have already shown this in our 16.1.1 release. It, we delivered a small security feature, which was um, the SSH authentication using digital certification. Um, we already delivered it on our Catalyst 3850 switches. And that feature is used by many of our federal customers, right? So those are the benefits that um, this 16X will give to the customers, right? Uh, just a quick question. So also the SNMP vendor-specific MIPS will be the same on all platforms? Yeah, so you would be able to leverage that just because we haven't changed this layer and this doesn't change. Okay. okay, I got a question. So with this one, one code for all devices, but not all devices support the same features, Yes. you're not going to have all the features sitting in that code yes. because then it's bloated, right? Yes. So how, are you, how do you handle that? So every image packaging is different. For ASR 1K, um, let's take this example, right? Let's say, let's assume hypothetically that we only want to support this feature on ASR 1K. The code, the image will not be bloated because we won't even include this subsystem in the image. The image packaging varies based on the platform. Okay, so it's a separate file. Yes. I have to uh, no, the file are the same. Here, we share everything at this layer, right? Right, but what I'm saying is, I'm gonna have to have a file an image. Two binaries, one binary for the 30. One binary and one, for the one binary. Yes. Two yes. different binaries. Yes, They're the not binaries the are binary. different, the packages are different. Yeah. It's like when you get open source software, it comes in ARM, comes in x86. Yeah. Kind of the same concept. Different hardware has different capabilities, mm -hmm. yeah. so they make a different binary for those. Right. Same software, though. Yes. So here, if the feature support on both, then the commands will be the same. Yes. Exactly. If it's support on both. Yes. Does this imply that inside Cisco, there's now a unified development process? Uh, because in the past, every product family had a programming team assigned to it, mm -hmm. and that's why the cadence was always out of lockstep, because every program ran at its own pace. Yes. And that's why uh, it has been a big challenge for me working with Cisco to know which... It's been very expensive for my customers to pay me yeah. to, to work out what, what worked and what didn't. Right, so engineering... But what I want to know is in the back end, has Cisco unified internally to do this? Are you actually sharing code, sharing images between teams? 
We so uh, to answer your question, so product management still may be different, but in the back end engineering kind of you can say it's merged. Right. So all of them, all of us, we are working. All the engineering they're working together at this point of time because this is a program that's going to evolve, you know, yeah. over the next few years. Yeah, uh, it will take yes. time for you to unify the images at the back end, I suspect, but that's the intention. Yes. Because otherwise I could see that, you know, executives might wander off and then it will fragment back out again. That okay. would be my concern. No, I mean, you are correct in that mm. sense, yes. Can I just say that what, what you're showing us here, what we're talking about, is something that I've heard was going to happen for as long as I've been doing anything with Cisco. Okay. That's awesome. It's it's out. It's delivered. That's it's awesome. Delivered. <laughs> yeah. We 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 have finally we have heard our customers. It's it's out. Okay. So any any more questions here? I'll move on to the next slides. I'll I want to cover a few other things, but overall, I think this is the heart of the presentation. Okay. So. Um, Let's look at that. So what, what exactly, what are the release highlights of 16.1.1, right? So feature consistency, you're, we're going to give you the ability to run any feature anywhere. And I've already given you, new, given you an example there. Um, there are certain enhancements that we have done in terms of you know, simpli simplifying some of the things for our customers and um, uh, just you know, overall making some of the operational efficiencies. Um, so in terms of simplicity, we have looked at, we have enhanced our web UI. So if prior to 16.1.1, if you look at web UI for 3850, um, it's kind of like very bland. We only support uh, wireless web UI, right? So what we have done here is we have uh, enhanced the web UI for both wired and wireless. And we have uh, given, um, we have added the cap capability of doing uh, day zero provisioning in a much better way. So today, uh, uh, let's say you have a box, and you just want to bring it up, out, up, and running on the network, right? Uh, prior to 16.1.1, you have to go through three different tools. It takes about 35 minutes to configure one device. Uh, with 16.1.1, we have made, we have done an enhancement where you take the box, plug it with the DHCP-enabled PC, and that's it. You start configuring, right? You, there are customizable dashboards based on what your preference is. You can see things like CPU hogs. You can look at the port statistics. Uh, you can also use things like uh, site profiling for, you know, which uses uh, Cisco's best practices, uh, depending on where you want to um, deploy that switch, right? So we have done some of the things. I'm going to show a, a quick. Uh, uh, it's kind of like a snapshot, but if you want to take a look, all you have to do is just load 16.1.1 and see it for yourself, right? And then, as I already pointed out, we have simplified the lifecycle management, right? Operational efficiency, let me cover it in the following slides. Okay, this is our new enhanced web UI. Um, there's more to it, but this is just one snapshot, right? All these dashlets are customizable. You can remove, you can add. Um, you, there is a task pending feature based on what are the things that you often, most often use, right? So this, compared to 3.7x release, there's a dramatic improvement right here. Is this sitting on top of an API of some sort, or, or is there an API that's exposed on 16.1 across both platforms? Uh, so it's, it's, it's just uh, the web UI is just in the process that you know, r runs on 3850, right? And in the back end, there are APIs that we use. Okay. I missed a couple of slides. Not sure what happened. But OK, I'll walk you through. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll walk you through what I was talking about in terms of uh, operation efficiency, right? So what we have introduced is uh, there are a couple of things that we have introduced in terms of logging, right? We have introduced uh, radioactive traces and conditional logging. So what is radioactive tracing? I think it's a very useful feature. A lot of customers, when they uh, reach out to us with some of their problems, right? So let's say uh, there's a problem here. Something happened right here. And TAC says, OK, you know, give us logs from here, give us logs from here, and give us logs from here, because we want to isolate the problem, right? And that's kind of cumbersome for a user, right? But with radioactive tracing, what we have done is 
So let's say with PBR configuration, let's just uh, use, let's say that it uses next hop of 1.1.1.1, right? And the problem happened here, we want to be able to get the logs, and you can do conditional logging, right? So one single command, and you're going to have this condition, let's say next hop IP 1.1.1, and that logging will be all across the process boundaries, right? So it'll be one log file that customers will be able to give us one single command. And the other thing is uh, binary tracing, uh, binary logs, right? So today our logs are text and takes up a lot of space. They usually roll over, and you know we have to tell the customer, give us this, give us that. So we have. Uh, uh, done uh, enhancements such that now those logs are binary, right? So it takes up less space and they have to give us one file which we can decode it and then we'll be able to figure out uh, things quickly, right? Um, the other thing that I quickly want to go through is uh, another thing which is a modularized upgrade which we have introduced in 16.1.1. Uh, what that means is, um, so let's say prior to 16.1.1, let's say a customer has 3.7.0, let's say. And this is what they are running right now. And that is running a wireless controller module version 1, right? Now, somewhere over here in the timeline, we introduce a new hardware. So new AP is introduced. Now, in a customer deployment, customer has already certified 3.7.0. They want to get the new AP, but Hey, you know what? They didn't. They don't want to move to 3.7.1 because it's more operational expense for them, right? So we have introduced a capability of doing WCM uh, modularized upgrades, right? So with that, what happens is the customer can still run 3.7.0, and they will be able to patch the WCM AP image on top of this, right? So they don't have to upgrade to 3.7.1 just to get the new hardware. So we have introduced that ability for the customers. Right? That is another benefit um, that will save them op OPEX. And I think there's, there's more to it. There are a lot of new features that we have introduced with the converged access for 16.1.1. And I would uh, suggest that you look at the release notes, go on CCO, and try it for yourself. And this modularized upgrades is only on 16.1.1, not on 3.7. Yes. I was just giving an example of prior to 16.1.1. So just Any to questions? clarify um, the API thing, so we're saying there's no REST API between the two platforms. Is there like or net, Netconf, Netconf, yeah. XML, AP, XML RPC API, and is it the same across, across both platforms as well? So that, uh, I would say, is stay tuned to uh, Cisco Live. You will get more information there. Um, that sounds like an invitation. <laughs> sure. No? I, I'm sure you guys will be there. So. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, just a quick question: the tool to decode the binary logs is it available for customers? Yes, it'll be available. Okay. Great. Okay. What about OS, OS consistency for things like ISR G2 platforms? Only because, like these two, I'd be fine if they were separate. But I, you know, across the routing platforms, it seems like it makes a lot of sense to have that consistency there. Okay, I'm gonna ask Ashish to answer that. ISRG2s don't run this QMP, the ASIC that we have. They run the classic iOS, yeah. and it's very difficult to migrate those platforms into this XE-based releases. So. ISR 4000s are on XE. Yes. Yeah, they are on 16.1.1, 16 16.2.1. Yeah, I do have a question on the web UI. Yes. So I can configure the box using this yes. UI, correct? Yes. And I can then go in and retrieve the config using the CLI. Is that correct? Uh, or, is, or is once I start programming it using the web UI, that's the only way I can get the config? No, you can yeah. still go to the CLI and the config, make changes, do anything you want. Okay. Now, is this web UI built into the hardware in, in the iOS, or is this an extra thing that I bring up that then does API calls to the box? So it's, it's talking it's, via internal data models today? But the web UI code, where does that code live? Does it it's live it's on the box. here? It's on okay, it's on the box, on the box. Yeah. and it's I just process. access it using HTTPS. Yes. It's not a separate yes. client, yeah. it's on the box. Okay.